Such a lot the gods gave to me. The dazed, the disappointed, the barren, the broken. Yet I am strangely content, and cling desperately to those sere moments when my mind momentarily threatens to reach beyond to the other. I must have lived years in this place, yet I cannot measure the time. No teacher urged or guided me, and I do not recall hearing any human voice in all those years, not even my own. I know not where I was born, save that the forest is infinitely old and infinitely horrible, full of dark trails, overhanging trees, where the eye could find only cobwebs and shadows. The air was always hideously damp, and there was an accursed smell everywhere as of the piled up corpses of dead generations. It was never light. The sun offered no heat. My needs were satisfied. Through the death of other things. Survival was my one waking thought. I fantastically associated these things with everyday events, and thought them more natural than the colored pictures of living beings which I found in my moldy magazine. From it, I learned all that I knew. My own aspect was a matter unthought of, for there were no mirrors in the forest, and I merely regarded myself by instinct as akin to the youthful figures I saw drawn and painted in the magazine. I felt conscious of youth because I remembered so little. One day, in many uncounted in my shadowy solitude, my longing for light grew so frantic that I could rest no more, and set forth I raised my hands entreating to the cold sun above. Could this be evidence of another traveler? My eyes were drawn to a path I had never trod before, a path of light. First, I feared I might be blinded. The sight was simple as it was stupefying. Here on this open ground, without sentinel trees to hem me in, I felt free. I saw light. I felt warmth. Half conscious, I staggered off the white gravel path and into the grass. I knew nor cared whether my experience was insanity, dreaming, or magic. The brilliance. The gaiety. I beheld in full, frightful vividness, inconceivable, indescribable, unmentionable monstrosity leering abhorrent travesty on human shape. The creature screamed at me, and I cried out in terror.
in the cosmos, there is balm as well as bitterness. And that balm is Nepenthe. Now I almost welcome the bitterness of alienation. For although Nepenthe has claimed me, I know always that I am an outsider, a stranger in this century and among those who are still men. This I have known ever since I stretched out my fingers to touch the abomination within the pool of water reflecting the sun and my own countenance. Unhappy is he to whom the memories of childhood bring only fear and sadness. Wretched is he who looks back upon lone hours in vast and dismal twilight groves of grotesque and gigantic and vine-encumbered trees that silently wave twisted branches far aloft. Such a lot the gods gave to me, the dazed, the disappointed, the barren, the broken. And yet I am strangely content. <laughs>